Now, we've got an interesting program lined up. We're going to go on part two on the Song of Songs. We're going to start with chapter five. The bridegroom king said, I have gathered your heart, my equal, my bride. I've gathered from my garden all my sacred spices, my myrrh. I've tasted and enjoyed my wine with you. I've tasted with pleasure that my pure milk, my honeycomb, which you have yielded to me, I delight in gathering my sacred spice. All the fruits of my life I have gathered from within you, my paradise garden. Come all my friends, feast upon my bride, all you revelers of my palace. Feast on her, my lovers, drink and drink and drink and drink again until you can take no more. Drink the wine of her love, take all you desire, you priest. My life within her will become your feast. We need more and more. When Jesus is in the middle of our life, that's what we emit. The Shumanite bride says, after this, I let my devotion slumber, but my heart for him stayed awake. I had a dream. I dreamed of my beloved. He was coming to me in the darkness of night. The melody of the man I love wakened me. I heard his knock at my heart's door, and he pleaded with me, get up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, please, wake up. Arise, my love. Open your heart, my darling, deep with still to me. Will you receive me this dark night? There is no one else but you, my friend, my equal. I need you this night to arise and come with me. You are my pure, loyal dove, a perfect partner, my flawless one. Will you arise from your heaviness and tears are more than I can bear. I have spent myself for you throughout the dark night. We all need to return to Jesus in a new way. Shula, my bride, says, I've already laid aside my garments for you. How can I take them up again, since I've yielded my righteousness? You have cleansed my life and taken me so far. Isn't that enough? My beloved, reach into me to unlock my heart. The core of my very being trembled at his touch, and how my soul melted when he spoke to me. My spirit arose to open for more of his touch. As I remembered the hymn, I began to sense his fragrance, the fragrance of his suffering love. It was a sense of mirror flowing all through me. I opened my soul to my beloved, but suddenly he was gone, and my heart was torn out in longing for him. Seek him while you can find him. I sought his presence, his fragrance, but could not find him anywhere. I called out for him, yet he did not answer. I will arise and search for him until I find him. And as I walked throughout the city in search of him, the overseers stopped me as they made their rounds. They beat me and bruised me until I could take no more. They wounded me deeply and removed my covering from me. Nevertheless, make me this promise, you brides to be. If you find my beloved one, please tell him. I endured all travails for him. I have been pierced through by love, and I will not be turned aside. We need to seek the Lord. The bride's to be. What love is this? How would, could you continue to care so deeply, care so deeply for Him? Isn't there another one who can steal away your heart? We see now your beauty more beautiful than all the others. What makes your beloved better than any other? What is it about Him? What's made you ask to us? Ask us to promise you this. Can't you find another? The Shulamite bride said, He alone is my beloved. He shines in dazzling splendor. He yet is still so approachable, without equal as he stands above all others. Outstanding among 10,000, the way he heals me is divine. His leadership so pure and dignified as he wears his crown of gold. Upon this crown, beautiful his insights, without distortion. His eyes rest upon the fullness of the river of revelation, flowing so clean and pure. Looking at his gentle face, I see such fullness of emotion, like a lovely garden where fragrant spices grow. What a man. No one speaks words so anointed as this one. Words that both pierce and heal. Words like lilies dripping with myrrh. See how his hands hold unlimited power, but he never uses it in anger. For he's always holy, displaying his glory. His innermost place is at where work of art so beautiful and bright, how magnifying, how magnificent, noble is this one, covered in majesty. He is steadfast in all, his, all he does. 
His ways are the ways of righteousness, based on truth and holiness. None can rival him, but all will be amazed by him. Most sweet are his kisses, even his whispers of love. He is delightful in every way and perfect from every viewpoint. If you ask me why I love him so, O brides-to-be, it's because there is none like him. Everything about him fills me with holy desire. And now he is my beloved, my friend forever. That friend is Jesus Christ. The brides-to-be said this, O rarest of beauty, where then has your lover gone? We long to see him too. May we find him. We'll follow you as you seek him. There's room at the cross for all of us. The bride says, my lover, I've gone down to, into the, his garden of delight, to the flower beds of spices to feed with those pure in heart. I'm fully devoted to my beloved, and my beloved is fully devoted to me. Christ is devoted to us. We need to be devoted to him. The king says, oh, my beloved, you are lovely. This is what he thinks of you. When I see you in your beauty, I will see a radiant city where we will dwell as one. More pleasing than any pleasure, more delightful than any delight. You have ravished my heart, stealing away my strength to resist you. Even hosts of angels stand in awe of you. Turn your eyes from me. I can't take it anymore. I cannot resist the passion of those eyes that I adore. For your undying devotion to me, it is the most yielded sacrifice. The shining of your spirit shows how you have taken my truth to become balanced and complete. Your beautiful blushing cheeks reveal how real your passion is for me, even hidden behind your veil of humility. I could have chosen any from among the vast multitude of the royal ones who followed me. But unique is my beloved dove, unrivaled in beauty, without equal beyond compare, the perfect, the favored one. Others see your beauty and sing of your joy. Brides and queens chant your praise. How blessed is she. Look at you now, rising as the day spring of dawn, fair as the shining moon, bright and brilliant as the sun in all its strength, astonishing to behold a majestic army, waving banners of victory. That's how Jesus Christ sees us. That's when he looks at us. That's what he sees. When we look in the mirror, what do we see? Probably not should, should probably shouldn't ask that question. I decided to go to the valley streams, the bride response, where the orchards of the king grow and mature. I've longed to know if hearts are opening. Are the budding vines blooming with new growth? Has their springtime of passion arrived yet? Of love arrived? And suddenly my longings transported me. My divine desire brought me next to my beloved prince, sitting with him in his royal chariot. We were lifted up together. The brides to be say, come back. Return to us, O maids of his majesty. Dance for us as we gaze upon your beauty. And the bride said, why would you seek a mere Shulamite like me? Why would you want to see my dance of love? And the bridegroom king responded, because you dance so gracefully as though you danced with angels. The brides-to-be wanted her not to turn to the Lord, to turn the other way. The revelation of the Holy Spirit, how beautiful are the mountains. The sandal feet of the one bringing good peace. You are truly royal. The way you walk so gracefully in my ways displays such dignity. You are truly the poetry of God. His very handiwork. Out of your innermost being is flowing the fullness of my spirit, never failing to comply and satisfy. Within your womb there is a birthing of harvest wheat. They are the sons and daughters nurtured by the purity you impart. How gracious you have become. Your life stands tall as a tower, like a shining light on a hill. Your revelation eyes are pure, the pools of refreshing, sprinkling light for a multitude. Such discernment surrounds you, protecting, protecting you from the enemy's advance. Redeeming your love crowns you as royalty. Your thoughts are full of life, wisdom, and virtue. Every king is held captive by your beauty. How delicious is your fair beauty. It cannot be described as 
It could not be described and as secure as you share with me your vineyard of love. Now I decree, I will send my palm tree. I will take hold of you in my power, possessing every part of my faithful bride. Your love I will drink as wine, and your words will be mine. For your kisses of love are exhilarating, and more than any delight I have known before. Your kisses of love waken even the sleep, even the lips of the sleeping ones. The Shulamite bride says, that's what the Lord has revealed to us by his Holy Spirit. Now I know that I am far from my beloved, and all his desires are fulfilled in me. Come away, my lover. Come with me to the faraway fields. I'll run away together to the forgotten places and show them redeeming love. Let us arise and run to the vineyards of your people and see if the budding vines of love are now in full bloom. We will discover if their passion is weakened. There I will display my love for you. The love applies. The love apples are in bloom, sending forth their fragrance of spring. The rarest of fruits are found at our doors, the new as well as the old. I have stored them for you, my lover friend. And the Shulamite bride responds, If only I could show everyone this passionate desire I have for you. The passion of the Lord, the passion we have for the Lord. If only I could express it fully, no matter who was watching me, without the shame of embarrassment. I long to bring you my innermost chamber, this holy sanctuary you have formed with me, or that I might carry you within me. I would give you the spiced wine of my love, the full cup of bliss that we share. We could, would drink our fill. We would drink our fill until his left hand cradles my head, while his right hand holds me close. We are at rest in this love. Promise me, brides to be, by the gentle gazelles and the delicate deer, that you will not disturb my love until he is ready to arise. And the bridegroom king says, who is this one? She rises out of the desert clinging to her beloved. When have I wakened you under the apple tree as you are feasting upon me? I waken your innermost being with the travail of birth as you long for more of me. Fasten me upon your heart as a seal of fire forever. The living, consuming flame will seal you as my prisoner of love. My passion is stronger than the chains of death and grave, all consuming as the flashes of fire. From the burning heart of God, place this fierce, unrelenting fire over your entire being. Rivers of pain and persecution will never extinguish the flame. Endless floods will be unable to quench his raging fire that burns within you. Everything will be consumed. It will stop at nothing as you yield everything to this furious fire until it will not even seem to you like a sacrifice anymore. That's the baptism of fire that we talked about. The Shulamite bride says, my brother said to me, when I was young, our sister is so immature. What will we do to guard her for her wedding day? And the King of Kings and the Holy Holy and the Holy Spirit says, we will build a tower of redemption to protect her. Since she is vulnerable, we will enclose her with a wall of cedar boards. The Shulamite bride said, but now I have grown and become a bride. And my love for him was made me a tower of passion and contentment for my beloved. I am now a firm wall of of protection for others, guarding them from harm. This is how he sees me. I am the one who brings him bliss, finding favor in his eyes. My bridegroom king has a vineyard of lover, love made from a multitude of followers. His caretakers of this vineyard have given my beloved their best. But as for my own vineyard of love, I give all the glory to you. I will give double honor to those who serve my beloved and have washed over my soul. My beloved, one <clears throat> with me in the garden, how marvelous that my friends, the brides to be, now hear your voice in song. Let me now hear it again. The bridegroom and his bride, the bridegroom Jesus Christ, and the bride, us, in divine relationship, says this, Arise, my darling, come quickly, my beloved, 
Come and be graceful. Be the graceful gazelle with me. I come, be like a young stag with me. We will dance in the high places of the sky. Yes, on the mountains of the fragrant surprise. And forever we shall be united. In eternity. That's the love story between a man and a woman. And it's a love story between us and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's one of the most awesome books in the Bible. It's one of the least taught books in the Bible. And it says it all. The Shulamite bride sums it up. But now I have grown and become a bride, and my love for him has made me a tower of passion and contentment for my beloved. I'm now a firm wall of protection for others, guarding them from harm. This is how he sees me. I am the one who brings him bliss, finding favor in his eyes. My bridegroom king has a vineyard of love, made from a multitude of followers. His caretakers of this vineyard have given my beloved their best. But as for my own vineyard of love, I give all the glory to you. And I will give double honor to those who serve my beloved and have watched over my soul, my beloved one, with me in my garden. And how marvelous that my friends, the brides-to-be, now hear your voice in song. Let me now hear it again. We will dance together in the high place of the sky. On a mountain, it's a fragrant spreads, and forever we will be united in eternity. I'm not gonna